This hive body cost me $23. This hive body cost me six. And it's made with plywood, butt joints, and everything else that everybody on the internet loves. But, again, six dollars. Now, the difference between the two is this one's made out of pine, this one's out of plywood again. It is a better deal on this, because this will last anywhere between 15 and 20 years. But if you don't have the money, or you don't have the ability to get your own pine and saw your own lumber and make dovetails and different things like that, where you groove everything and the handles, then this might be the option where we deal with cleats. Plywood as a cheap alternative, exterior plywood, make sure you got exterior plywood, and simple butt joints on the ends for people who, kind of like me, doesn't really have the setup or the time or some other reason that you might not be able to do butt joints. You might have to, or details like this. So I'll show you a few little tricks to make these work and how you can build them with just a saw. Building a beehive isn't actually as hard as you may think it is. I used to think it was crazy wild and there's numbers flying all over at you. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know the inside, the outside, the width, the length, how many this, how many that. So I'm gonna actually kind of simplify this for you. Make it so that this hive doesn't require all the dovetails and the cuts and the fancy pieces. It's made out of cheap plywood butt joints, like I said, and you can actually build it with salt. Now, throughout, at the end, I've got some of these, and you can find those in the description below, and you can even find them on the website where I have a small blog. I can keep everything like that, and then you guys can print these off later. Revert to the sizes on there, because from time to time, I call 5878s, and it's better if you just go off those plans. So take a look at those, and we're going to get started. You're going to see how easy it is to actually build a beehive. So of course, if you don't have a table saw to rip down your pieces, you can always use these types of jigs. And this is what I used before I had a good table saw. And originally this was eight feet long, specifically designed for that. And what it is, is that you take your circular saw, and it's just a track. You clamp it down onto your piece of work, take your circular saw, run it down the length of that, and this is your rip fence, and this is your length that you're going to be cutting, where your saw blade will be cutting through. You would line that up at 9 and 5 eighths. So we're going to get to sawing the lumber or plywood. So that's going to be three of these cut down into 19 and 7 eighths, and the other one is going to give you seven end pieces at 12 and a half. So we're going to work over on the miter saw and show you what to do. Now, of course, if you don't have a miter saw, you can take this. You can either do it with a hand saw, or you can take one of these jigs, set them up on the length that you need, run your circular saw off and just keep working down the road. It takes a little more time, but if you're using plywood hives, you're probably not worrying about too many being produced. You might be making four at the most, four hives. And by the way, one plywood will make one hive, because you're going to get five brood out of this, five deeps, and one medium. Slides off the rack. And on to the next cut. 
So I'm going to cut these down to 12 and a half and 19 and 7 eighths and then we're going to move on and I'm going to show you how to nail them together. Or not nail them together, I guess I've got to cut the strips first. Makes it easier working in smaller pieces like this instead of an entire length. Even though you're getting all the ends off of the one piece. So we're going to cut this all down seven times. Save your scraps at the end of those 19 and 7 eighths cuts because the ends the waste will be used for these guys. Now that we've got all the pieces cut out and we've got the 12 and a half by 9 and 5 eighths, we now need to cut that little groove in there like this. And if you can see that, that's going to be 5 eighths high and 3 eighths. And a little trick with plywood is each one of these layers is an eighth. So you can just count them out and kind of set your table saw or your saw to that. Now, there is a way that you can cut these out without a table saw or a circular saw. You can use either a dado jig with a circular saw or just a little bit of time and effort with a hand saw. And here's what you're going to need if you're going to use just a saw and cut your groove in for your frames. The combination blade is already set to 5 eighths deep. We're going to mark, mark this off where we want to make the cut. And I always try and knock out anything like this where you've got an imperfection. I use that. Of course, this isn't a very good one to begin with. But just go ahead and mark off your 5 eighths. Set up your line or your square edge. Just take a piece of three quarter inch plywood and that will be able to fit there. You'll also be able to use it as kind of a guide to keep your saw straight. And away we go. And basically the only thing you gotta really worry about is keeping that one edge straight. So cut all the way down to three eighths. Once you get down to three eighths, switch out to the chisel and just peel that edge off. So if you've been using a circular saw up to this point, you're going to have, and you don't have a table saw, you're going to have to use one of these to cut the edge. At some point in time, I got rid of mine or destroyed it for the actual side that I'm supposed to be cutting. This is actually to ride along the left. <clears throat> or it was made for a different table or a circular saw. And what this is, is you take three quarters of an inch, the depth of your, the piece that you want to dado. You make it a 90, tack it all together, glue it, and how it works is you set it up like that. Now if this was the correct one, this line right here would rut or sit right where you got to cut it. Now, of course you're going to clamp it and you're going to make sure that you've got a secure work area. I'm not actually going to make the circular saw go, but you just set it and you ride it right along there. Of course, not with your fingers, it's going to be clamped and it'll groove it right there. Of course, you've got to set that for yourself, or for 5 eighths. Once you've done that, you're going to have a groove cut into this. And again, take a chisel and just trim that off. Or, you can just keep moving the jig over and you just keep slicing it until you knock everything off there and clean it up with a chisel. So we're going to move on to the table saw and do the miter work with that. And that's how you work with the circular saw. And of course, make sure your saw is turned off or unplugged even better. You can't see this, but just to the point to where it touches. And I can feel it just nicking. So that's good.
Now that we have our pieces cut into 12 and a half and 19 and 7 eighths with the same height. Now, of course, if you're doing mediums, you're going to be doing 6 and 5 eighths. And basically, what I've done is I've set up a corner here because I don't have any fancy jigs or anything for keeping everything square. I've just taken two pieces of straight plywood from scraps, mounted them onto my table, and made sure that it was square over here. And what I do, Take my end pieces for side walls. Take my ends from frame rest. Glue it, nail it, staple it, brad nail, and whatever basically you're going to be working with. You can use screws, but I recommend pre drilling the screws if you do that using two and a half inch screws. Brad nails I've used and they've held up, but I loaded them full of basically brad nails. The other option is the Ardox nail or spiral nail, just a two and a half inch nail. Nail them into the side as per normal. But I'm gonna use staples. My gun takes inch and a half, so that's what I run. I recommend two inch if you can use two inch staples. Mine's just a narrow crown. The process of it is Take your glue, get the best quality glue you can get for outdoor use. Oh, helps to open it. Try and get a little bit on the top, not too much. Run it down that side. You don't need to be really exact with it, just as long as you're not gooping all over your workplace. Together, square it up, and as it's held together, so I'm going to finish this off and I'm going to show you guys a trick up close about nailing right here and at the bottom so that when you use your hive tool and get in there and you start prying or having to pull frames apart, you don't just separate this. So I'm going to show you a little trick using screws or nails or anything else like that. As I was building this, I was doing this pattern while I was going, but I left the last one for you guys to see. And what I do is I take the staple and I crisscross it at the top and at the bottom. That way it resists a little better on when you're pulling pressure against it like this or like this and each corner is done like that, you can actually go all the way up and down each side angling it in there because right now we've got good shear load strength but it's not really uh, needed with a hive except for on the sides or on the handle area. So what happens is these tend to pull apart when they're a butt joint and that's the, dis or the disadvantage to a butt joint. So this just sort of helps out a little bit more to kind of hold that together. I'm going to do that for you right now, showing you what I mean. So for the tops and bottom, angle it in like that. And then up like that. Now you can always go up the whole length like this, and it will help resist the entire set the miter saw to 14 inches and the reason why I make them 14 inches is so that the ends of the the hive lines up there nail through this point and then you've got the sides a little extra holding onto it 
That saves you the trouble. Adding cleats saves you the trouble of having to cut out grooves in the plywood to make handles. These are going to be like a cleat handle. So basically set your miter saw up. You can do this with a hand saw or a circular saw again. Simply, you're just seeing it on a miter saw. And now we're ready. Now it's time to do the handles and take care of them. What we did was we cut these down to inch and a half. And if you use the 1x6, unlike what I used, I used a 1x4, you can use the remaining amount left over to start using as a 3 quarter by 3 quarter base for your bottoms. But in this case, we've got two handles anyway at 14 inches. And that's what the distance is from here to here. And what I did is I started using 2 inch lids anyway, so I set mine to 2 inch on the combination square. I mark it down here. like that. You can either draw it across there but that's simply not needed. I put the sharp side up just so it's easier on my hands. Glue it and staple it together. So I'll take care of that right now and I'm going to show you the end product of this when it's done. So I've gone ahead and taken care of the gluing on this and as you can see the cleats are set out to the very edges at 14 inches. Again we're dealing with a butt joint and everybody loves those so I'm going to defend it. Now what I do is I take and because it's a simple build we're really just aiming for the ones who don't have major woodworking skills, doesn't have a lot of tools. Everything right now I've tried to show you can do with a handsaw and a screw, at least a drill or a hammer and nail. So what I do is, first I start like this. I angle the staple up towards the top on the edges. The reason for that is because when you grab a hold of the handle, the weight doesn't just pull out. If you angle it down towards the bottom, technically the staples can actually pull out when you're hauling a 100 pound box. So right now the staples are angled up so that it resists, it digs it further into the cleat. And it has nothing to do with the length of the staples I use, it's really just for added strength. So I'll go ahead and continue nailing this together. And that's how I build my hives. I've tried to make it as simple as I could with as little woodworking skill as needed just simply to make them as fast as I can. And again, like I said, I mean, I'm planning on going down to the pine, and that is the ultimate box, basically. This is the safest, this is the best. But for some of us out there, this will have to do. And I mean, honestly, if you only got four hives and you've got minimal money, but you really want to get into beekeeping, this is probably your best bet. Now, what this gave was a bottom board, a deep hive body, or a medium if you go that route and top, migratory top. I remembered that. And it makes it really simple for people to get into Langstroth's. Now, down the road I'm going to be making and covering a little bit about top bar hives because I've run those as well. And kind of give you a little bit more of an idea which way you might want to go and see the differences. And again, that's a simple build that I'm planning and working out. I just got to figure everything out. So, hope to see you next time, and if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, drop a comment in the comments below, and subscribe, and I hope to see you next time.